Okay, problem number three. Um, I'm gonna dub this one the FRQ of death. Uh, there was one, like 2006, some old FRQ that had that name. It was like a rope with linear density variation was falling over a table. It was, it was bad. Um, uh, I think it was one that I just looked up. I didn't, I didn't teach the class back then. But uh, yeah, this one, I'm gonna no, no ifs ands or buts about it. This one was uh, average score under four points uh, worldwide. So let's see if we can beat that just by spending five minutes consciously setting up what equations we would use and then see if we can put in some numbers and, uh, or in this case, variables and crunch through it. Don't be scared by all the weird variables. Everything can be done with the equations we have and the understanding we have of how to use them. All right, let's go. So it says a triangular rod, triangle doesn't matter. It has no bearing on this. That's just stupid college board trying to confuse you. A triangular rod of length L and mass M has non-uniform linear density, mass density given by the equation lambda equals gamma X squared, where gamma is equal to 3M over L cubed. So lambda is 3M over L cubed times X squared. Why they differentiate that, I don't know. Um, X is the distance from point P, I'm sorry, and X is the distance from point P at the left rod of the end, left end of the rod. I feel like I should start this over again. Um, using integral calculus, don't freak out. Show that the rotational inertia I of the rod about its axis perpendicular to the page through point P is this. So calculate rotational inertia. I don't want to do that. I know you don't want to do it, but the equation for it is right here. I is equal, let me write this out, integral of r squared dm. Now, we would need to substitute all that other stuff in there. Um, so lambda is technically equal to 3m over l cubed times x squared. But uh, when we do these problems, same thing for the uh, center of mass, which guess what that's part b is, we would replace the dm. In this case, it's just the x direction. So we'd put x squared and then in place of dm, we have to put lambda dx. So the dm is lambda dx. So we replace that here, lambda dx. And uh, so they'd be x squared multiplied by 3m over l cubed x squared dx. I don't want to do that right now, but that's an integral that we could do. But we'll see if just putting that formulation down gets us some credit. Uh, determine the horizontal location of the center of mass of the rod. So let me go over here to our center of mass calculation. They're just, there's the love in the integral calculus on this one. There's wetting their chops at it. Uh, so center of mass, we have the equation is one over mass integral lambda dx or lambda x dx. And the m can be integral of lambda dx. So those equations are at least partially on our formula sheet. But if we want to know the position of the center of mass, we would have, uh, let's see, it's the integral of lambda x dx all over the integral of lambda dx. And we would then put stuff into that to actually simplify and solve it. Um, not sure how many points are for each of those things, but I don't really feel like putting all that stuff in right now to do it. Only two minutes left. Um, it says for an axis perpendicular to the page, this is this value of rotational inertia of a rod about point P greater than, less than, or equal to a value of the rotational inertia of the rod about its center of mass? Oh my goodness, that's such a confusing statement. Um, so if the rod is denser as you get further out and we're going around point P right now, they're saying is it more rotational inertia at point P or is it more rotational inertia about this position here? Well it's clearly gonna be more rotational inertia about point P because there's mass farther out. So it should be greater than and uh, justify your answer, greater um, R from pivot gives greater I. I don't know if that's a good description or if that's even legible, but again, trying to squeeze some stuff in in uh, five minutes here. Uh, what's next? Uh, the rod, rod is released from rest because of course it is. Um, 
And the rod begins to rotate about its horizontal axis. Draw on the axes below, um, sorry, sketch the magnitude of the net torque and the omega. Well, torque, um, torque is going to be from somewhere on the center of mass there around that point P. You're going to get a lot of torque in the beginning and then it's going to decrease as it goes to a vertical position. So um, something like this, because torque equals RF sine theta. So as the angle changes, it's going to should drop off. Um, and then omega should be increasing, starts out at nothing and gets bigger and bigger. But then it, um, as the torque gets smaller, when the torque gets smaller, what's the omega going to do? It goes bigger. You know, I'm thinking I'm getting it mixed up here. Is this torque starts off, torque starts off maximum. See, I'm screwing up. Look at that. I think I even said that out loud. It starts off and it goes to zero and I drew it the other way. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused with my own drawing. Good thing we technically have 15 minutes for an FRQ. You start with a lot of torque. And then as you go down, the torque decreases because it's just pulling on it. So the torque should do something like this. And then the omega should do something like that. Yeah, that, that's what's, something was looking wrong with that. Um, part E, we don't have time. And then, oh, geez, there's a part F. Yeah, okay, well, like I said, um, average score was like three point something for this. So yeah, let's not go too bananas. All right, let's take a look at the rubric here. Got it up on the screen. Uh, let's see what we got for part A. Um, for using integral calculus to determine the to calculate the calculus to calculate the rotational inertia of the rod. So for using integral calculus, we get a point even though they said to use integral calculus. I'm taking it. Um, so one point for writing that equation, I guess. Um, and then for correctly substituting gamma x squared into the above equation, you get a point. But then you have to do all the calculation and it doesn't Okay, evidently, yeah, this earlier FRQ, same thing that's like for starting it, you get a point, but then there's all these steps and it doesn't say for correct answer. So I, I don't know, I guess I'm going to put that in as a, for putting in, anyways, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what to do here. So um, this or this is plus one, I guess. I don't know. This college board man. Um, B. Uh, for using an integral calculus to determine the center of mass of the rod. So um, we wrote in the filled in version of these. So instead of x dm, we wrote uh, x lambda dx, x lambda dx here. Um, and then, so we did not substitute in gamma x squared. Didn't take that step. So we get one point there. We wouldn't get the second point. Um, and then there's all two more points all together there we're not getting. That's a lot of stuff there. Um, then for C, for selecting greater than, that'd be a point, and for correct justifications is because more of the mass of the rod is at the end P for P. Um, yeah, so there, and then they also have like a parallel axis theorem equivalent. So that technically would be two points, but uh, you know, not sure. Um, it says with an attempted justification. So if you put greater than and just wrote something, you would at least get um, a point there. Um, and then this technically would be worth another point, although I, I'm gonna call that in as, a, as a possible. And then the same thing for D, I even screwed these graphs up at, at first. Um, so possibly, possibly for these a point maybe. Let's see, hmm. there's a lot of people not quite sure what to do for that. So the torque and the omega ones, uh, and for consistency between the two graphs, I don't think we have consistency. I'm just gonna say we got one point there. Um, and then for E and F, yeah, we didn't even look at that. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at how many points we could have potentially gotten here. And we'll say two or three of them are kind of iffy. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, six. So, so two or three points iffy, that's not bad. Maybe, you know, four, four points or so on average. Um, the average score was 3.79 with a standard deviation of 3.35. So that means there's a whole lot of uh, people who scored, you know, half the people scored less than this and went all the way down basically to zero. So yeah, that's oh, that's a tricky one. This one has really low standard deviation though. That's crazy. Okay, um, anyways, uh, post this stuff up online, check it out, try the rest of the problem, spend as much time as you want, 
but don't spend too much time because in five minutes, maybe 10, you can, you know, you're not gonna, if you're gonna milk it, you're not gonna get a cup of milk. You might get a thimble full, but uh, at least you're gonna get something out of it. So keep it cool, get the points.